The following video has been created without the use of AI. Please support your human content creators by liking and subscribing and commenting something down below. Thank you. Your mechanical hands flicked through band-aids looking for the correct color. Behind you, you could hear the mother of the child you were taking care of on the phone. It happened about 10 minutes ago when the kid fell and bruised her elbows in Pfizer Blast. She was around the age of 12 and a very brave girl. She wasn't crying and even let you properly clean the wound without a fuzz. You are glad the mother felt comfortable enough to remain on the phone and not shout at you while you followed your subroutines of wound care. Finally, you found the right band-aid that was a match with the girl's skin color. The girl stretched out her arm, allowing you to place it over the bruise. You are a very brave girl, you commented. Before turning to the candy bowl, you gave her a complimentary fast fizz fast bonbon. She thanked you and jumped off the table. But before she and her mother could leave, you had a quick question. Excuse me, miss. The mother turned around. She had a bored and somewhat surprised expression on her face. Yes? I couldn't help but overhear you talk. It was about a vacation. I am not programmed to pry, so please do not see it as an attempt. I simply wish to understand something. You blinked. What does cozy mean? Confused, slightly annoyed, and yet still intrigued, the mother mumbled into her phone. I'll call you back, Stephen. She then crossed her arms and rilled you with questions. Mostly she wondered why you wanted to know it. Answering honestly, she eventually caved. After all, you are just a silly little robot. <sighs> Cozy is a feeling we humans have. It is hard to define, but can easily be described as a warm living room. Lots of wood, a fireplace. You tilted your head, causing her to immediately raise a hand to shut you up. Like a wooden house with a fireplace, made from stone or something. She had dealt enough with Freddy today, who was having one of his customer appreciation events where you spent all day in the atrium with the diners. Honestly, the only reason she entertained you right now was to ensure you stop bothering her for the rest of the day. It's a feeling you get when you just want to sit down, have someone to cuddle with, drink a hot drink, and just enjoy the moment. It feels quite warm. You blinked slowly as you worked for the information. <sighs> Anyways, I'll go after my brat now, if you don't mind. She barked. You nodded your head. Understood. I hope you have a nice, continued stay at the Pizzaplex. Uh-huh. You were left alone inside the office. Cozy? Hmm... You decided you liked the word. But as your eyes moved across the sterile looking nurse's office, you realized that this didn't fit the definition of cozy at all. It was time for boyfriend time. It was three days after your talk with the mother about what cozy meant. Boyfriend time was a monthly, sometimes weekly event which was held with you and the daycare attendant. The Pizza Plex's employees and even some customers had noticed that the twitchy animatronic was much more calm around you. When asked, he would state, She takes care of my friends in a way I cannot, a good way, a beautiful way. And you? Your response was a caring... He is funny. He says things that make me smile. And so it was decided that you two were a thing now. 
Over the weeks, Brian, leader of the security guards, suggested boyfriend time as a reward for good behavior. Since your behaviors were very, very carefully programmed as you directly interacted with children and parents who more than likely were already in distress as a nurse, well, there was zero chance your behavior was bad. But the daycare attendant, who needed to entertain and interact with rowdy toddlers all day, well, he was quite twitchy. Originally meant as a one-man show animatronic at the theater, he had multiple personalities that all were fighting for control, with his moon personality being the most... volatile. But thanks to your presence, he was reintroduced as you kept him under control. However, in those cases, you needed to be there. So it was often that either Moon or Sun were not present during boyfriend time, due to their bad behavior. Boyfriend time happened inside a small simulated world, sectioned inside one of the Mega Pizza Plexus servers, accessed via parts and services. The simulation was so marginal that it could only support digital human representations of the animatronics and a single scenario, which usually was a looping 100 meters by 100 meter square called a world. One of them, for example, was a large grass field due to its low amount of props and things to render, as it was just grass with a tree in the middle, this one was used most of the time and actually double the size of the others, 200 by 200 meters. And it was very well liked by sun and moon alike. Today, this world was planned by Kevin, on duty engineer of the Pizzaplex, for you and sun to have a nice picnic in. But while the daycare attendant in his sun mode was already switched off, ready to be uploaded into the servers, you had an interjection. Standing up, you approached Kevin. You towered over him as you were three meters tall. He was surprised to see you up close like this. Usually you were very agreeable with the process. So, you suddenly standing up was something new. Excuse me, Mr. Engineer. Kevin. You blinked. Excuse me, Mr. Kevin. He rolled his eyes. Just Kevin is enough. You blinked again. Excuse me, Kevin. What's up, Nurse Bendy? You turned your head to look at the screen of the computer. I have a request. I wish to experience the word cozy. My office does not fulfill this emotion, and I'm unsure if any place inside the Pizzaplex fulfills it. Kevin inhaled, but then deflated a little, as he thought. Hmm. There were a few worlds that he could describe as cozy. Though considering your programming... If you don't mind, explain to me what you understand as cozy. He hummed as you repeated the exact same words of the customer from a couple days ago. Hmm. I can try something. Remember Winter Wonderland? A world powdered in snow. I've spent an evening with Moon there. We built snowmen, had a snowball fight, then cuddled beneath a blanket on the porch of the cabin until the simulation was switched off. Yeah, that one. How about this time I put you two into the cabin? This will result in the outside being an empty void to save server space, but it should still give you the intended feeling. If not, please send me a complaint. I will promise you until next boyfriend time I have something for you. If you don't like it. You cross your arms, looking at your Roomba-shaped feet. These terms are acceptable. A feeling came to you. It was the same as always. A need. The need to breathe. A 
upon your request, after your first boyfriend time, your digital selves were given realistic human bodies. And while sure, initially this was meant to bother you and your partners, it actually ended up being a blessing, as it opened the door for a certain intimate biological interaction that otherwise was impossible for you or your partners to do in your robot bodies. So in an attempt to annoy you and the daycare attendant by having you brief, swallow salvia and experience hunger and thirst, unintentionally, or well, considering Kevin's personality and search history, probably this was very much intended. This function was wonderful. The first few breaths, as per usual, manual. You needed to think about the action, feeling your digital lungs fill with air, and then exhale. You then opened your eyes, staring right at a wooden ceiling. You were in a bed. Rolling on your side, you saw sun, both of you unclothed entirely, lying on the blanket. It was a little cold, but you could get used to it. Sun was awake, but not fully there yet. He was breathing loudly through his mouth, a sign he wasn't used to this yet. Inside the digital world, Sun's human appearance was that of a man in his late twenties, with strong, big arms and clearly defined muscles, while still having a soft, slightly round belly. He was like a human-shaped stuffed toy, soft, squishy, and strong. With shoulder-long blonde hair and white eyes that in the light of the bedroom almost seemed to glow. And he looked at you with a lewd smile. After a moment of silence, he said, Is this a love shack? I heard Brian talk about it. This appears to be one. I mean, we're both... He stopped himself blushed and then giggled. Nakey. You smiled softly, gently brushing a hand against his cheek and expectantly he pursed his lips. But your thoughts were somewhere else. And so you purred. Not yet. Aww. Disappointed, he let his shoulders hang. What is missing? Aren't you in the mood? You swung out of bed and excitedly walked out of the bedroom, and he sighed. And yet, with a curious expression, he followed closely behind you. And he inhaled, as he certainly liked what he was seeing. You were crouching down next to an unlit fireplace. From a basket, you were putting locks into it. You could tell by your butt wiggling that you weren't freezing like him. This place was like a fridge, at least to him, but still excited. Sun's gaze then went around the room. It was beautifully decorated. Warm colors, a kitchenette, and a dining table. In front of a fireplace stood a sofa that looked super soft and comfy, with a cow pattern. The windows let in blue light, as if outside it was night, which did make him uneasy, but all lamps in the cabin were turned on, giving off warm orange light. With a smile, he sat down on the sofa, enjoying the view. But after a few minutes, he got a blanket thrown in his face. Hey! As he pulled it off, however, he was greeted by the sight of you smiling, with your hands on your hips, your perfect body illuminated from behind by the fire. It crackled pleasantly. Without warning, you stepped forward, wrapped your arms around him into a deep and close embrace. Hey! He purred more content and excited now that he was feeling your soft, warm body push into him. Grabbing the blanket, you flew it around the both of you. Placing your head on his shoulder, you stared at the flames with a warm smile. 
his hands gently moving up and down your back in a soothing manner, your thighs touching, quietly remain sitting next to each other like this. How do you feel? You asked. Happy! You know, happy to be with you, he said excited. Sun smiled. Your eyes went up, Sun's beautiful body, until they met his. I feel cozy. You exclaimed, so excited, it sounded exasperated. You gave him a smile that made his digital heart flutter. In fact, it was so much that his right eye suddenly twitched. You could already tell by how his body had been reacting to your presence since you awoke. The day he was really holding himself back. And so your expression became more devious. Your hand brushed slowly over his thigh, making him shiver in delight until it touched something hard and warm between his legs. I can certainly feel how happy you are. You whispered seductively. He exhaled at your touch. Nice bendy, he grunted. Your grip tightened. Oh, I love you. <laughs> I love you too, son. You kissed him on the lips. Sun pushed wind through his nose. You felt a tickle across your skin. A moment later, you could feel something thick and slimy part your lips. And humming pleased, you allowed his tongue entrance into your mouth. Hey, thank you for making it to the very end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and please remember to like and subscribe. But before I say goodbye, I would like to shout out all of my lovely channel members. Especially my darling Stuarts, Husky HD17, Bella Mare, Mystic Jade 111, Giovanni Moretti, Twilight Mia, Angry Boxman, Hella, Melofia, Anonymous Weep, and Nicodemus D. I couldn't do this without your help. Thank you for your continued support. Anyways, I hope you have a nice day. Goodbye.